This is John Cola with OKRaw.com. I have another exciting episode for you today, and today's going to be a very important one. So often I hear, hey, John, the raw foods diet's so expensive, you know, I can't do it. I don't got enough money to eat raw. Well, you know, today's video is the three best ways that I've learned over the 17 years that I've been into the raw foods to make raw foods affordable. So uh, what we're going to do today is actually open my car because I just got back from the wholesale produce market. And as I show you guys what I bought and how inexpensive it was for organic food, I'm also going to weave in the three tips so that you can eat raw foods affordably. And now I'm going to go over what I got and how much it all costs. So first, I'm going to go for these guys. I got a whole case of cantaloupes. Now, at present time at Whole Foods Market, if you do shop at Whole Foods, you could buy two organic cantaloupes for $6. So that's $3 each. This whole case of uh, nine cantaloupes cost me $17, so that's well below their price of two for six. So that saves me about 10 bucks of, uh, you know, what they sell them for at Whole Foods. And these are all organic, baby. Next, probably one of my favorite buys this week, and it's these guys right here. This is a double layer, or approximately 22 pounds of organic white nectarines. I prefer white nectarines and white peaches over the yellow counterparts because they're generally lower in acid and much sweeter. So uh, these guys, while not optimally ripe, because these guys I would prefer to buy at the farmer's market, but there's no farmer's markets open today on the Monday. So we got these guys and I probably ate about half dozen of them, or actually more, <laughs> before I even got home, the ripest ones. And that's the other thing, you know, if you are buying by the case, you want to inspect your produce every single day and eat it or use it before you lose it, before it goes bad. So I went through and picked all the soft ones and now I'm gonna basically take these out in each tray and set them out so they're not stacked up on top of each other because they can actually get bruised. And I'm gonna check them every day, just go around the top, press gently and see when they give a little bit and then I'll start to eat them. Next, we got these guys. These guys are organic mangoes. These are the wholesome harvest mangoes. These were sold by the box. And you better sit down before I tell you the price of these guys. These are organic mangoes, and look at these guys. I mean, they don't get much riper than that unless you live in Florida or Hawaii and pick them off the tree yourself, <laughs> which I would agree are actually better than these guys because these are imported, and when they import mangoes from outside the country, they have to hot water dip them. And some people may say that if your mangoes are hot water dipped, they may no longer be raw. I personally think they are still raw. They definitely still have a lot of enzymes, a lot of nutrition, and they taste really good. That being said, when you do buy imported mangoes, you want to get them a little bit soft. If you're buying uh, mangoes from the place you live or that are from the state, say the state of California, we get California mangoes, you got to buy them a little bit harder because when they're soft, then they're actually fermented. These guys actually need to be soft um, to eat them. So these guys, $4 a case. So this case has six, and some of these cases have like a lot more. Check it out. This guy has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mangoes for four bucks. That's 40 cents each. Organic mangoes. Eat your heart out, baby. I got six cases of these guys, so guess what? I'm gonna go. I got them in different stages, so I didn't get all the ripest ones. I got a couple boxes of ripe ones, a couple boxes of unripe ones, and then I'm gonna eat all the ripe ones first. And as you know, uh, time progresses, I'll eat through the ripe ones, and then finally the ones that are not ripe will be ripe and ready for me to eat. So you gotta basically stage your fruit, especially when you're buying in bulk like this. You wanna get some ripe, some unripe, because if you have them all ripe and you can't eat them all at once, then they may start going bad on you, and that's no fun. So we're gonna go ahead and unload these six boxes of mangoes. So I know what you might be thinking right now. You might be thinking, hey John, who, who's all that fruit for? Who's gonna eat it? Well, hey, this is just little of me. I eat lots of fruit, and actually a lot of food. And if you think about it, if you are on a raw foods diet, and the raw foods diet I recommend is a diet rich in fresh fruits and fresh vegetables that should make up the majority of your calories, both the fruits and the vegetables, and minimal nuts and seeds and other foods, then you really need to eat a lot of food to get there. You know, for example, one pound of fruit has approximately 300 calories, one pound of vegetable has about 100 calories. On the same token, one small tablespoon of oil has 120 calories. And if I'm striving to get approximately 2,000 calories a day, you know, that's definitely a lot of poundage of the fruits I'm eating. And so the other thing to remember is that all the fruits that you're seeing me pull out of the car are high water rich foods. 
So a lot of these, you know, really what I'm toting around is water. I'm getting water secondhand absorbed from the fruit or the vegetable that has absorbed it and also mixed it with phytochemicals, phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals that are really important for me to have in my diet so that I can be optimally healthy. But mainly, we're just getting a lot of water. And I encourage you guys to eat water-rich foods so you don't have to drink water because dehydration can cause some health challenges. So as you can see, I'm buying a lot of foods in bulk and that's actually my first tip is to buy foods in bulk. When you buy foods in bulk, you're gonna get a better deal, whether you buy it at your grocery store, whether you get it at your farmer's market, or whether you get it at the wholesale produce market where they will only sell it to you in bulk. Anyways, let's uh, continue on and show you what else I got. All right, check it out what I got next. More mangoes. These are organic alliance mangoes, and these were actually at a different place. I didn't see those other ones first, because otherwise I would've just bought those guys, because those guys are more riper or more ripe than these guys. These guys are not optimal. But when they told me these guys were only $5 a box, I was like, that's a good deal. Until I saw those for $4 a box. But these guys have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 mangoes organic for five bucks. That's still 50 cents each. And that's definitely a good deal. So these guys, what I'm gonna let them do is uh, I'm gonna eat all those guys first, let these guys ripen up. And by the time I eat all the other ones, then these guys should be ready. And you, you know, generally I stage my fruit outside the refrigerator. If I do want to try to keep them longer, then I will put some in the fridge to kind of keep them cooler. Some other things you can do is stage fruit around your house. So, you know, if your garage is cool, you could put some fruit in the garage because it's going to be cooler than maybe in your kitchen next to the window where it's warmer and then fruits are going to ripen faster. Of course, in the fridge, things are going to ripen up the slowest. But sometimes I feel that if you put things in the fridge, then it kind of might mess it up, mess up the whole ripening process. In any case, uh, we got uh, four cases of these guys, so that's another 40 mangoes alone. <laughs> and that was only $20. So let me go ahead and put these aside and show you what else I got. Next, I got a case of cucumbers and a few straggler zucchinis. <laughs> so on my way home today, I stopped by a community garden and I picked some fresh zucchinis. And I want to encourage you guys, you know, to pick your fruits or get your foods as fresh as possible. The fresher, the higher quality of the food, the healthier you're going to be because the more nutrition is in that food. I prefer to pick all my stuff locally or even grow it myself than buy the stuff I'm buying. But in some cases, you know, you got to do the best you can. So, uh, yeah, my organic homegrown zucchinis. But what we're going to talk about next are these guys. These guys are hot house cucumbers. This is the actually the uh, Euro Fresh Farms brand grown in the USA. And if you look closely on the box here, you guys probably can't see that on the camera. It says pesticide residue free certified. So this is NutriClean certified pesticide free. These uh, cucumbers are grown in the greenhouse. So because they're grown in the greenhouse, they're in a controlled environment that they can keep the bugs off. So they generally don't have to spray them. They'll use like ladybugs and things instead. Uh, whenever possible, they use a system called IPM. Now, while not totally organic, it's definitely a step in the right direction and much better than conventional farming and buying, you know, conventional cucumbers. So because these are also grown in the greenhouse, they don't have any herbicides either because in the greenhouse, you know, if they're not letting the weed seeds in, they're not growing and then they don't have to spray either. So I like to use these guys, you know, just for eating out of hand. You know, cucumbers are fruit because they do contain seeds, but they're a non-sweet fruit. And this can be very important for some people that have problems with the sugar. I happen to like sugar. But if you do have problems with the sugar, you know, instead of eating one mango, eat a bite of mango, eat a bite of cucumber. Eat a bite of mango, eat a bite of cucumber. And that'll dilute the sugars by adding extra fiber. These guys I generally use uh, for juicing. So uh, once again, another way to get your water by juicing. And that's another thing I do. If it comes getting close and some of the fruit's going bad, before it goes bad, I'm just gonna juice it up and get the liquid out of it and that by and not eat the fiber. Thereby, I'll still get most of the nutrition out of it except for the fiber. That being said, fiber is definitely important in your diet, so you may also want to blend the uh, produce items instead of juice them. So these guys, this is a case of uh, 16 of these uh, hot house cucumbers and these guys were about $10 for the case. Uh, normally in the store, these guys are about $2 each. Oh, and we didn't go over the price of the mangoes in store at Whole Foods, like two for five, that's $2.50 each. And the price of the uh, nectarines in Whole Foods at this time is about $4.99 each. You know, I paid approximately a dollar a pound for those. 
and you know well under a dollar pound for the mangoes and I paid about 50 cents a pound for the uh, cantaloupe so definitely good prices here so if you're curious about you know where I got all this stuff be sure to check my other videos you know I have over 200 videos teaching about a uh, plant-based raw whole foods diet and I have a video called uh, how to save 50% on your produce I've gone to various produce markets from South San Francisco San Francisco even one out in the uh, Baltimore area out near DC and in those videos I show the specific ways to uh, you know work with the produce wholesalers there and how to buy the stuff in addition I also give hints and tips on how to find a wholesale produce market in your area so if you watch those videos you'll know how to do it but also you know just do a Google search Google search you know wholesale produce market in your city name unfortunately there's only maybe about uh, up to a dozen or two dozen wholesale produce markets in the country and they're located around larger cities so you might be stuck if you don't have a large city around you so anyways that'll bring me to my next tip tip number two on how to make raw foods most affordable is buy the food as close to the source as possible because thereby you're going to reduce the amount of middlemen and you're going to reduce the profit that the middlemen are making thereby saving you some money so the best of all absolutely is going to the farmers market because then you buy it directly from the farmer and then there's no middleman so for example like two weeks ago I went to the farmers market and I got an 18 pound box of organic cherries and guess how much they cost me you know in Whole Foods they may sell for $8.99 a pound actually this week they're on sale for $4.99 a pound but I bought an 18 pound box of organic cherries for $25 can't beat that with a stick so yes so buy the produce as close to the source as possible farmers markets are the best second best of course is the wholesale produce market which I just told you about obviously last best is just like the standard grocery store because it goes from the farmer to the wholesaler to the grocery store but even so you could use the first tip that I mentioned which is buy in bulk whether you go to your health food store or your grocery store you know go to the back and ask the produce manager hey man if I bought a you know case of this would you give me a better deal and most times they will and sometimes they may be even able to special order things for you that they may not actually stock in the store so that's another good tip anyways let's continue so the next thing I got once again are more uh, pesticide free greenhouse grown and uh, cluster tomatoes these are still on the vine I like to buy my tomatoes on the vine when I buy them they seem to taste a little bit better than the ones that are already separated and while these are not organic these are once again grown in the greenhouse and they got the little thing on there grown in the USA and also pesticide free and they use IPM this is the same company that grows the seedless cucumbers this is 11 pounds here and this was only eight dollars so definitely a really good deal in the store those tomatoes generally sell for about two dollars a pound let's check out what's next oh no mr. bill we got more tomatoes <laughs> so I found the deal on those tomatoes which are fairly good and I didn't want to be stuck without tomatoes until I found this deal and these guys are actually uh, little uh, grape tomatoes and these are organic actually this is an organic box of 22 pounds of grape tomatoes this 22 pound box of grape tomatoes was only ten dollars so that's definitely less than 50 cents a pound if you want to buy these in Whole Foods they won't be bulk like this they'll probably be in little plastic containers maybe pint sizes for I don't know like four or five bucks so buying like this definitely a good way to save money up to now you saw all the organic foods that I bought and actually some pesticide free foods that I bought now we're just gonna get into the conventional stuff now it's my belief that it's best to eat organic foods whenever possible and when available if they had these guys in organic then I definitely probably would have bought them organic but they're not currently available and instead of limiting my diet by oh I only eat organic you know and not get the nutrition in some of these foods I'm gonna eat some conventionally raised foods which may be organic but they just didn't pay for the certification in my opinion these items are low in pesticides so what you want to do if you're not familiar with what foods are high in pesticides and what foods are low in pesticides is you want to do a Google search for the environmental working group and you can search for the dirty dozen and the clean 15 the environmental working group goes over all the statistics on what produce items have what percentages of pesticide residues on them every year and they put out a list to let you guys know what foods you probably should avoid uh, that are conventional and the foods that are probably okay to eat that are conventional unfortunately the foods that I bought um, except for the avocados are not on their list generally avocados are fairly low in the pesticide residue so that's what I'm gonna go over first the avocados now check this deal out 
This is one huge box of avocados. I mean, this thing is heavy. It's probably, and I don't want to even guess how much this thing weighs. But it's one box of avocados, as you can see. I mean, these guys are peewee avocados. So if you're on an 80-10-10 diet, don't worry about it. There's nothing in here hardly because they're all pit and very little flesh. And that's another reason why these were inexpensive because these are seconds. You know, they may have some funky skin like that. And in general, I find when avocados are small like this, they don't actually taste all that great either. But nonetheless, I can't complain because for 96 avocados that are in here, that's almost 100 avocados. And man, if you guys on 80-10-10 think this is going to affect your uh, fat ratio if you're eating high calories, you got an, you're, you're kidding yourself because this thing, there's like nothing in here, man. <laughs> Guilt-free avocados on your no overt fats 80-10-10 diet right here. It's probably all pit, man. But nonetheless, there's a, including the small one, there's 96 avos in here. That's almost 100 avocados. These are non-organic, of course. But this whole box, $8. That's insane. I'm going to have to give some of these to a friend because these guys are also ripe, which is another reason why it was inexpensive, and they're seconds, and they're small. So I'm not, I'm definitely not going to be able to eat all these before they go go uh, bad so definitely gonna be giving them out at the store these peewee avocados you know sometimes they sell for 50 cents or three for a dollar here in california maybe other parts of the country they may sell for more but even so i mean i guess there's even a few large ones in here check that one out i mean that one sell for at least a buck or so in the in the store in this whole box eight bucks now the next food i bought i bought specifically for the water as i said all the foods that i bought are high in water content and actually these guys are the exception. These guys are actually mostly water and I bought these specifically for their water content. After all, we are 70 to 75% water and if we don't eat foods that are that rich in water, we're gonna get dehydrated and you can have some health challenges such as headaches from just simply being dehydrated. So drink more water is what they'll tell you, but I would say eat more fruits and vegetables that'll give you the water you need. And actually this is the one, the number one food that I'd recommend for that. Some people consider it an honorary fruit, some people consider it a nut. But what I consider it is water-rich deliciousness. What we have here are coconuts. And these just aren't any kind of coconuts. Actually, these guys are ginormous coconuts. So these guys don't look like the coconuts you guys might know. You guys might know the coconuts as the brown coconuts that look like this, but brown. Those are the old mature coconuts, and those aren't optimal for drinking because most of the time when you shake them, you're gonna hear water sloshing around. When you hear water sloshing around, that means it's getting older and it's getting ready to sprout and throw up a coconut palm out of it. So those guys may have only half full of water and the meat inside is gonna be very thick. Now, if you want to make it something like coconut milk, which is high in fat, you could get those brown coconuts, but these guys are better because they're full of water. If you shake it, there's no water sloshing around because it's totally full. If you, When I pop the eye right here to get the water out, it's gonna spray me in the face. It's like spitting at me. Uh, that's because it's totally full of water and there's actually it's pressurized in there the meat is also gonna be you know thinner than this brown coconut which is gonna be thicker so there's less fat in here as well that being said I don't generally eat the meat out of these I might save them and dehydrate it for dressings and once in a while I'll make some coconut milk but my main source uh, and my main use of these guys are actually for its water the water is high electro in electrolytes the water is also high in plant cytokines which may be anti-aging so I like these guys definitely over the brown ones. And you guys may also be familiar with the Thai coconuts. So in the ordering, it's the Thai coconuts are the youngest, but the Thai coconuts to me are eating like Fuji apples because they're always really sickly sweet and they always taste the same. These guys are more like the ones that I found in nature. If I'm in Puerto Rico or Hawaii or in the Caribbean and drinking coconuts on the beach, these guys, each one just tastes a little bit different. And I like the genetic variety and how things taste a little bit different. So then there's these white coconuts, and then finally you have the brown, old, mature coconuts, which I don't generally drink unless there's nothing, you know, unless I can't get these, these ones. And let's talk about sprays and treatment, post-harvest treatment. As you heard, the uh, mangoes are hot water dipped treatment after they're harvested to, for aphids, for pest control. And what they do to these guys is, actually I'm not too sure, but I'm highly confident these guys aren't dipped or treated because these guys have a hard shell and because these guys are already husked, husked you know, literally no pest could ride along uh, with this when it comes to the U.S. In addition, these guys tend to go bad fairly quickly uh, and they will mold They actually start molding and fungusing from the inside when they start going bad if you don't keep them cold. Uh, generally, if you do buy them in this shape and they're in pretty good shape, 
uh, and I keep these guys cold, I could probably keep them for up to a month. So that being said, I like these Mexican ones because they're not treated. The Thai coconuts in the, in the, that looks like the yurt in the husk, those guys are dipped in thymobenzol, which is a fungicide, the same thing they spray on non-organic bananas and also dipped in sulfides. And the question is, do that, does that get through? Well, I don't know. I saw one test that said it didn't, but you know, there's other people that say they do. And in general, I think they don't. But that being said, I prefer to drink these guys instead. I believe the water is a lot, you know, richer tasting and more alive. Plus, also, if you are, uh, you know, concerned with uh, food mileage, these guys come from Mexico, which is a lot closer than the ones from Thailand. So this box here for 20 cocos this week was 26.50. They'll hover around 25, 26 bucks. So uh, definitely not too bad of a price. So next box, second to the last, we got this box right here. And uh, let's show you guys what's in this box right here. Open it up. These guys are called Fresh Coconuts. This is product of Thailand. Let's go ahead and open this box up and check it out. Inside this box, there's 35 little Thai coconuts. So these guys are significantly smaller than the last ones I showed you guys. Now what are these guys? These guys, you could hear them shake a little bit. The water's shaking around, so it's not totally full of water. These guys are fairly similar to the um, young Thai coconuts you get that are in the yurt that have the husk, but these are mostly husk removed. So they've shaved these down a lot except for the top where the eyelets are so that if, if they did shave that off, then all the water would leak out because the eyelets on these guys are really thin and they don't offer too much protection to uh, you know keep the fruit longer. So what you do is you just cleave off the top, stick a straw in there, and you could drink it. So these guys were uh, 35 pieces for $32, so a little bit less than a dollar each. And let me tell you, on the way home, I already drank six of these guys. These guys are like nothing to drink. Uh, in addition, the meat in here is actually a fairly jelly meat, but I have found, based on past experience, that this is my first time buying these guys wholesale. I bought them usually at Asian markets when I seen them, but I never seen them at the wholesale market. Uh, based on my experience, these guys generally go bad faster. So actually, I don't necessarily recommend buying these. Uh, of the six I drank, maybe three were optimally good and three were maybe kind of on their way out, but I drank them anyways. How could you tell if a coconut's bad? Well, if you got a pink or purplish watercolor and it's not totally sweet, if you cleave it open and look at the meat and the meat's like either a gray, a pinkish, or a purplish, not good. I've never seen pink or purplish meat when I've been out in nature cutting coconuts down from the tree and I've cut hundreds of coconuts down from the tree never pink and purple it's always white so they I, I highly believe that they are treating these coconuts in some way and I don't I don't know how they're actually treating these so you know I'm not gonna necessarily buy these all too often I'd rather get those Mexican ones that I just showed you but I always like experimenting and trying new foods and seeing how these are so Definitely less than a dollar each, and this is my main source of water for the upcoming week. So once again, the coconuts are rich in trace minerals, and you know, I'd rather drink a coconut instead of a Gatorade, although my brother, he'd probably still drink a Gatorade instead of a coconut. <laughs> you might be thinking, hey John, how are you going to store all that food? Well, you know, those coconuts I just took out were under refrigeration when I bought them, the Thai coconuts, so they're going to go in my refrigerator. The uh, Mexican coconuts were also under refrigeration when I bought them, but they will be more stable. Um, outside the refrigerator if I did have extra refrigerator room I would put them in the fridge but they're actually take up a lot of space so I won't put them in the fridge so those are gonna stay out the tomatoes are gonna stay out of the fridge the cucumbers have to go in the fridge um, the avocados I'm gonna put some of them in the fridge to stay you know good longer and leave some out and give some to friends some of the mangoes I might put in the fridge you know to keep them a little bit longer because I do have so many of them all my nectarines are gonna stay out of the fridge because I want them to ripen up and eat them my cantaloupes, while you could put them in the fridge, I'm going to leave them out of the fridge and then just use them fairly quickly. So, you know, depending on the produce item is going to depend if you need to put it in the fridge or not. Plus, it depends on your fridge space. When you buy this much produce, you could easily fill up your fridge really fast. So when you're at the wholesale produce market or wherever buying in bulk, you want to think about that. So here's the last box. And man, this guy's heavy. Ugh. It says 36 pounds on the box, but I think this is an oversized or overweight box here. Let's go ahead and pull that top off. Look at that one. That's a Laurel and Hardy, or Hardy and Laurel, jackfruits. So these are the world's biggest fruits, and these are these are actually just small examples of them. Oh, man, that's a heavy guy right there. I love these guys. These guys taste like juicy fruit gum. And actually, I have a funny story for you. So I, I just came back from a vegetarian conference, actually. I was there for five days. And somebody at the table was telling me, oh, yeah, I just had jackfruit this year. And I'm like, oh, yeah? You know, uh, how did you buy it? How much did it cost? 
and then she's trying to explain it and oh yeah I like the texture and all this stuff and then uh, then she finally tells me oh yeah it was in a can <laughs> I was like oh geez and I'm like you got to watch out that canned food you know I mean may have BPA in the container also they're probably stored in syrup they may not be ripe as if you bought them fresh but she told me they were in water but you know what let me tell you canned food and frozen food does not compare to the flavor and texture of the fresh food and we're meant to be eating the freshest foods as possible so that's why I get these guys fresh these guys are imported from Mexico and they do have some kind of uh, fungicide or something on the stem because if they didn't treat the stem then the stem would get rot and then it would go seep into the fruit so normally before I eat this I cleave off all this whole top that has the uh, the powdery fungicide stuff and then I'll cut this in half and eat it jackfruit in the store normally sells for about uh, maybe around a dollar dollar twenty nine dollar fifty a pound if you buy them whole or if you buy them pre-cut which if you're not a jackfruit expert you may want to buy them pre-cut because then you'll be able to tell if it's gonna be a good one a lot of jackfruit sold in the US that are imported may not be fully ripe and they're gonna taste horrible and not even worth it uh, let me give you some tips on picking a ripe jackfruit number one you want to try to get it when it's not too green you want it to have a nice golden color these guys are fairly good examples there's probably one better example but uh, that that case had one large jackfruit instead of two smaller ones due to my eating style I'd rather have two smaller ones because each one will probably be about uh, two meals for me and if I had a bigger one then I'd have to cut it open and kind of like leave it out or leave it in the fridge longer and that'd probably be like four meals because that'd be like a 40 pound jackfruit versus two 20 pounders actually I think this is probably a 20 and this is maybe a 25 pounder another uh, indicator of ripeness is the smell use your sniffer like if you're in the tropics and you have ever harvested a jackfruit I mean you could be walking like 20 feet away from the tree and you'll smell the nice fruity aroma and you know the smell is a really big indicator that it's really ripe unfortunately most of the imported ones are not that ripe to even smell but they may give a, a little scent you know to you to let you know they are ripe. another indicator is that they're gonna be a little bit soft so gentle pressure to the touch kinda of like a soft avocado you don't want to be able to put your finger through it and you want to inspect for any black spots the way jackfruits go bad is there'll be spots that'll just get really soft and you'll be able to push your finger in there so if you could do that and there's only maybe one spot like that and the rest is soft it might be alright if you want to give up that one small bad spot but if there's a lot of spots on like that it could just be getting real funky on the inside I don't necessarily recommend it but yeah, the other indicator is just the uh, the touch. It wanted get, it wants to yield to general pressure, and both these guys yield to general pressure. They have a little faint smell, but not really the smell that you'd smell if they're truly ripe off the tree. And finally, they're a nice golden color. So that's pretty much what I got at the wholesale produce market uh, this week. This case, once again, was twenty six dollars. So that saved me minimum fifty percent off the price of retail if I bought whole ones. But if I cu bought cut ones it'd be a lot more oh and if you do buy the cut jackfruit you want to look at the color of the fruit itself not the pith part not the white part but you want the color of the jackfruit as deep rich as possible now jackfruits can be in I've seen orange and yellow and they may even come in other colors but you want it to be the deepest darkest yellow or orange color as possible and those guys because they are cut open you will definitely smell the nice juicy fruit gum smell and uh, you know just smells so delicious that's all the food I bought and all this food will probably last me about two weeks until I go down to the wholesale produce market again and with that we're gonna come to the third and final way to save money or to make the raw foods diet more affordable it's simply this grow a huge garden I mean you can see I really didn't buy too many vegetables I mean having a jackfruit tree is a huge tree and having mango trees you know number one they don't grow here I do have an avocado tree that's gonna produce some avocados like that hopefully one day fruits because it's uh, fairly uh, easier on the labor to harvest them they're fairly inexpensive that being said I'd rather get them at the farmers market than the wholesale produce market but the vegetables is where you could really save a lot of money by growing it yourself I mean I've tree collards that I plant once they grow 365 days a year I have just bundles and bundles and bundles of kale now depending on where you live a bunch of kale may cost you two bucks or maybe in three or four dollars that's just for six leaves but I have trees that are just full of leaves I can't even eat them all that's a good problem to have so you literally plant some of these plants once they continue to produce produce for you day after day this is the summer season now so I have many exotic greens actually an exotic some of the exotic greens I'm growing money can't buy the reason for that is because some of the greens I'm growing once you cut them and harvest them they don't ship well they don't transport well and once you cut them and harvest them 
within hours they're wilted and you know nobody's gonna be buying wilted greens but what they will do is they'll probably wilt them and then freeze them or wilt them and put them in a can to sell them to you but you won't be able to buy some of the greens i grow fresh that being said some of the common greens available in the store these days you know lettuces and a lot of kales and brassica family plants do really well they grow in the cold weather and they can handle cutting and being put in the fridge just like it was the winter time and they'll preserve quite well so a lot of the foods that we see in the store are foods that will actually survive transportation so you're eating a diet dictated to you by industry on the foods that are going to last when they're transported and not the foods in my opinion you should be growing which is more of the wild foods that tend to spoil fast so you really got to grow them yourself i mean i have a lot of tomato plants and cucumber plants my cucumber plants are about two feet tall now might be a few more weeks before they start putting on cucumbers then i won't have to be buying cucumbers for definitely a while and i have beans and all kinds of other greens and things growing on in my garden that i look forward to harvesting in the near future if you want to learn more about my garden what i'm growing and even how to grow yourself please be sure to visit my other youtube channel growingyourgreens.com where i will teach you personally how to grow your own greens in your front yard so you could be just like John. <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and enjoy these three top tips from the 17 year raw foodist to save you guys more money on raw foods and make it affordable so that you can eat the healthiest diet in the world, in my opinion. So once again, my name is John Kohler with okraw.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best.